gorgeous part, Johan. Johan, um, I reached out to you a little while ago and I don't know if you're necessarily uh, being polite to say yes to me of being in this series of, of videos, but I've adored working with you from the get-go. I love how heart-focused you are. I love how much you love your people. Uh, your brand is a true beautiful brand now you you naughty little devil sent me a pair of earrings in the post and i loved receiving your branding is just gorgeous it's so delicious i want to gobble it all up your boxes your stickers your everything it's just beautiful um and the reason i reached out to you is i had kept patting you on the back saying you're just doing exceptional throughout this change and I think until somebody else actually does that, it, you just keep going. You just keep popping up for air every now and again. And uh, thank you, because the concept of pivoting in business, as we all know, is always there. But you have, and I tip my hat to you, good sir, you have just sailed through. I know there's been very minimal sleep, <laughs> loads of stress. But the way you've conducted yourself, um, and for those listening right now, um, I applaud Johan for how young he is, but for how wise he is in his business world. Johan, tell us a little bit more about your business, maybe pre-COVID, up until COVID. So let's maybe start from uh, plodding along, you know, king of my world up until, say, February this year. And then we'll go, say, February onwards, if you don't mind, and sharing some of your, some of your lessons learned. <laughs> well. So firstly, thank you for such a lovely introduction. That was just uh, very heartwarming. And you are the, the true encourager. I think you are the one that sort of helps people when they are off, like they're off kilter, off kilter in your mind, off kilter uh, with your business. And I think what you have done and for me, I'm sure for lots of other people is to bring that word right at the right time, just to kind of put us back into gear, realign, um, just give us that sense of, all right, we can do this. It's possible. There is something here for us. And so I just want to say thank you. That's and so it's a pleasure to be part of this conversation today. Um, so I guess for people that don't know me or my business, um, uh, my name's Johan. My business is called Pigeonhole. It is primarily a retail business. We sell unique and beautiful things sourced from local suppliers and makers, as well as from all around the world beautiful things that bring joy to your life and to the lives of those around you. So I guess uh, in one sense, we are a gift store, uh, have unique products for kids, for adults, for the elderly, for anyone, pretty much every single person, you could find something in one of my stores, uh, but it's something that you probably wouldn't find elsewhere. It's something that you might have seen before and everything has been handpicked to bring joy, beauty, color, fun and friendship into your life. Um, and so I've been going since 2007 and uh, up, in, uh, up, up until uh, this year, I had 10 stores that were operational, but our business is uh, quite nimble. So sometimes we'll have um, up to 15 stores. We open pop-up stores. We open and close them all the time. Um, but uh, this year we had 10 stores around the country selling gifts homewares, fashion, indoor plants, a little bit of everything. Um, and kind of coming off like a, a bit of a rough Christmas, actually. Like I think with the bushfires and everything else that was going on. And, mm -hmm. um, and just in general, the retail climate hasn't been that great. So we've just come off like a, a sort of a tough Christmas, trying to like pull ourselves back together in January, refine our feet in Feb. And then I guess we started to get word of this this disease, this thing that was going on outside of the world, and we just started to notice people stop coming out. The store sales started to go down, probably about mid Feb. They started mm -hmm. to go down about 20% every week, and it just got like, yeah, more and more, like, I don't know, like desert town, I guess. Mm -hmm. Probably sort of like by, by mid March, we were like, it's like 70 to 80 percent down on our normal figures and it just kind of got worse and so yeah it was, it was you know i think I mean, it's, it's something that a lot of businesses uh experienced um so it's not something you know woe is me just me but i, I know that everyone's experienced um different levels of the challenge i guess of covid um i think being in retail i think the challenge was 
also the fact that uh, we were told to stay open, but people were told not to come out. <laughs> and so it was really awesome. kind of Thanks for that. that was going on. Um, and, and I think it was confusing for everyone and, and for our team. And I, yeah, I, I guess, um, I can't remember exactly what the question was, but I guess I had this uh, lovely chain of stores um, around the country. And mm. I guess as COVID hit, we sort of, um, sort of came to a kind of bit of a grinding halt. We closed all locations at the start of April. Um, and that was, I guess, a mixture of me, a sense of my responsibility to the community to not uh, have, you know, have places open that are encouraging people out of their homes. Mm. So my responsibility to my team, um, and I guess the challenge there was my team were desperate for hours. And so it was mm -hmm. this, a, a bit of a tight rope where I probably kept the business open longer mm -hmm. than necessary. But I think for me, I was like, that was my commitment to my team, try to keep them employed. Um, and then I guess at the point where we heard about JobKeeper and we're like, okay, this is a thing that a lot of my team can be eligible for. We said, look, let's, mm -hmm. close let's, um, let's just stop this and we'll all focus in on working from home and doing what we can to build, rebuild, pivot, as as um, as is the catchphrase for the season. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> it's going to be well, the word of 2020, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Totally. And I was obviously um, uh, not necessarily not necessarily holding your hand, but there to provide um, support and love and care for you. And I obviously was privy to how you went through the process but there were some major moments for me that you know I'm very blessed that I can pick and choose clients and for me it's um, clients that are obviously of a certain size but of clients who operate from this giant you know organ on our left side of our body and you do you are even in the scramble and amidst your sleepless nights and your most worrisome moments this email that you sent to your team are just I don't think I told you at the time, but it really just made me smile because you are the epitome of, uh, you know, the dream client. Not that you're in a position that I dream that I love to help you out of, but obviously we, we worked on a lot of strategy to help coax you out of we were, but more so that you operate from the heart and you actually give a shit and you care about your people and your people have been with you along the journey and you started as a baby business and you should be very proud of your achievements to have built it up to 11 stores throughout the country. And at your darkest, deepest moment, just like a lot of other business owners were, I know a lot of other people just threw their hands up and sort of ran away from their team. This is now when you need to really act as a, a, a tribe and a community and come together and you did, you banded together and the response from your people was exceptional. You essentially said to them, you guys have got the option. I'll do whatever you want. I'll support you in whatever capacity. I can't really keep you. I love you. I can't afford much, but you know, it's up to you. And, and the response was, we're not going anywhere, buddy. We love you. We love the brand. We love the business and we love what you've built. And so that was just, that was a testament to you and your heart. I love that. Um, and your followers are beautiful too. So in essence, your brand is just a walking, talking, beautiful thing that you've created and you created that. So your pivot um, was always focused on pivoting, but with your people in mind as well. Um, obviously, you created this brand that you wanted to leverage off. And so um, it was no surprise to me that you thought of something that was aligned to your brand, but slightly different. And it was so cool. The day that you messaged me your new website and I'll let you tell the listeners what, what, what you've done and what your new baby is, I just went, oh, high five. That is just awesome. You've done such a great job. And I know it might not be that the worst is over yet, but you're just, you're just doing it. You're pivoting beautifully and very elegantly. Um, so tell us now what you're doing. Obviously, Pigeonhole will forever be Pigeonhole, but for the time is Pigeonhole on pigeon. Hold, may I say? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess um, when when we close all the stores, our first uh, first point of call was okay. Well, what have we got? We've got customers, and we have a following, and we have product, um, and we actually have an online presence, but we just haven't really kind of grabbed hold of that. And I think right. 
Yeah. yeah, I'm just like a person to person style of guy. And I think that's sort of my team is embodies that kind of value. And so for us, we're like, okay, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna try to get everything online. And it was just an enormous, enormous, enormous task. And we have yeah. probably five to 10,000 active SKUs in the company across so many different product categories <laughs> and writing descriptions, yeah. doing these Excel spreadsheets. I mean, keep in mind, most of my team were hired because of like awesome personalities, but they, a lot of them don't have any computer skills at all. And it was just, a, it was a real stress on all of us. Mm. But there was one aspect of, um, uh, I guess one product category for us that was working uh, leading up to COVID and um, and that was indoor plants. And so in, in our stores, we sell a little bit of everything, like you can buy a dress, you can buy earrings, you can buy stuff for your kitchen and you can buy plants. And um, it was interesting because as I guess things start to close, we had this sense of we have to look after these plants. We can't let them die and get oh, them to the store. And like, we were really like stressed about it. like a lot of our team was like, what are we going to do? And we had people were like, oh, we're going to take them home. We're going to look after them. And our customers, <laughs> like, roster. <laughs> I know, and our customers were crazily like obsessed with what's going to happen with your plants. We've got to buy them off. you have got to take them home. We've got to look after them. And it was just this idea that everyone was so like interested, not interested, or like just so concerned with the well-being of these living things that we had in our stores. And, um, it just made me think that, look, maybe if we are closed like for six months or like in lockdown for like a long period of time, then maybe like we could like keep up this uh, thing of giving things to one another, but you know, maybe we could help people do that by delivering plants to our customers. And I guess, it came from this, this place of firstly, everyone was like so concerned about the plants and you know, we're adopting out these plants left, right and centre and everyone wanted them. Um, and that, you know, to the point where we'd like start to run out of plants before we'd even close the stores down. And I'm like, <laughs> but I what about find the more plants so that we can adopt them out, even though we're trying to close like and shut everything down. But secondly, because there was a sense of we actually have no access to cash now, stores are closed. And I kept them open probably longer than I needed to have. And I spent every cent on paying wages and it was just, it was just a gong show. And, but what I did have was some, uh, some of the nurseries that I bought from, I didn't have minimum orders. And they said, look, Johan, if you want, you can um, borrow our plants. You can take photos of them and you can just, you know, like you can just place, you know, order of one and just pick it up and deliver it if you want to. And so I guess that was the idea that I had. Oh, I was covered like, in goosebumps. I didn't we'll, know we'll, that component. I didn't know we'll you borrowed from the I thought, we'll, we'll start there. Like, I don't need money then. I can just photograph everything. I got one of my friends who's a photographer to take photos. And I thought, we'll get them all online and then we'll take an order. And with, the money, with that money that comes in from the order, I'll go to the nursery, buy the plant. I've got some members that are on JobKeeper and they can go and deliver them. So that was the original, that's sort of where it kind of stemmed from of the thought of, we have no money, I do. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh god! Oh, yeah, wow. so what I did with 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 what I've got, which is kind of nothing, but there was a demand for plants, and I had some I had team members and JobKeeper, and I had um, a couple of suppliers that um, were happy to try and facilitate sort of this thing that we were trying to get off the ground. Um, and so that's yeah, I guess that's where the idea stemmed from. Oh, sorry, I said that again, but <laughs> you'll the, never say it the same. <laughs> um, but I guess as things like, because I'm based in WA, well, that's where mm -hmm. we started and I've got a national business now, but I flew back to Perth when the, the boys were locking down um, over this side, just look up clumsy. So I came back over here and because I was here in Perth, I could actually visit the nurseries. I could actually like kind of create something a bit more than this mm -hmm. slap together uh, yep. COVID strategy. And so I guess that's where um, this new brand, which is called Hello Houseplant, that's where that was formed. So it became, originally it was just like, okay, this is something that I throw together as part of pigeonhole to kind of just get these plants out the door and to have some way of servicing our, our clientele without having money to back it. Um, but I think what ended up happening was, because I was here in WA and the restrictions eased up really quickly over this side. So I was actually able to open up three of my four 
I had five stores here, but I was able to open, able to open three of them back up again. Mm -hmm. um, and that gave me a little bit of breathing space to then actually go, okay, right, there's a few dollars trickling through the door now um, here in Perth, and I'll use some of that to actually make the site more of what it could be and put a bit more of my own personal energy and my own personal intention behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we launched it a, about a week and a half ago now. Um, and it's had an amazing response. We've been really blown away. Look, it's not like crazy big dollars, but like we've had a whole bunch of repeat orders already within, within the course of one week. And it's just to see for me, you know, cause I've been very hands on with this um, whole thing. Like I'm even delivering the plants myself at the moment, but actually to be able to rock up to a complete stranger's house, with a bunch of plants, for them to be so excited by what you're giving them, and you, and then they give them the, give you a tour around the house, show oh, you. The look at all my other plants. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's it's really a pretty cool feeling, and then oh. to, like, note cards for our customers because they're they're giving plants as gifts, which was the original intention, and to you know to care of you know like the things that they're giving gifts for like to congratulate someone on their new house or their new baby or just for being an awesome person or an awesome friend it's it's actually really heartwarming and it's something that I mean, gives me a lot of energy for for what we're doing and you know i'm not a tech person and i think this whole online thing was something i've been avoiding but to, <laughs> to use uh, to focus in on one category of the company mm -hmm. and to, to be able to do that wrap my head around that to do that well and to get our team involved around that has been like a real i guess a um a stepping stone i think for us to then be able to look at the rest of the business and how we can get everything else up up online and to have an authentic customer focused community focused aspect but to have that in a digital presence and in, in a digital format i think that's something that i've been struggling with previously but seeing that come to life in uh in hello house plant has been something that's really encouraged me to take that journey forwards that's so cool i and i know that obviously we have spoken about yes your online strategy for pigeonhole itself and we'll get there i promise you and i know that seems like a massive massive uh something to tackle and i think if if nothing else, you know, I, I respect that Hello Houseplant is in its infancy, um, but it's, you're right, it's given you that, that pep in your step, that love, that joy, that energy of what I dare say pigeonhole was to you pre-COVID, that is your baby. But if nothing else, it's, I hope, rejuvenated your love of what you do and why you do it, just to not necessarily fill your pockets with money, but fill your heart with just what what you do and how, who you serve in your community goes far greater than just selling a product. It's how you make them feel. It's how you engage with them. It's listening to their story. And these are the things that I, I struggle to teach some business owners because they just think it's so far removed from business. But the more people can incorporate that messaging into their brand message, you, you've got it. That's, you know, and one day, I cannot wait for us to look back and say what a blessing COVID was because I never would have thought I'd be X, Y, and Z, in, insert blanks here. And it's because of these kind of pivots, you know, I never want to wish a global pandemic upon anybody ever again, but we have been through them before and we will again. But now you know, and you believe in yourself and you believe in your customer base and your brand that you did it and it's not over but you're doing it you know and i just i love your story that's why i wanted to interview you today um and you are a yeah you're definitely pioneering the way of pivoting and i hope that the message out on the other side of this is somebody's watched this video and just goes wow how can i sniff out that opportunity and instead of looking at it as doomsday what can i do and you've listened to your people and you weren't necessarily 100% certain, but you gave it a shot. And I'm just, I think I messaged you one day and said, it's like you're my, oh, my high school son stepping out on stage and I'm just a proud mummy. <laughs> Cause I am, I just, to see it come to fruition is just the coolest thing ever. And so um, in a very non COVID friendly way, I can't wait to hug you and squeeze you to your eyeballs, pop out of your head. And um, thank you. Thank you for being here today. If you had, 
um, you know, a, a takeaway for somebody who's on the verge of wanting to change or wanting to bring out that new product or go online, what would you suggest just really quickly to cap off? What, what would you give them as, as some words of wisdom from the king himself? Oh, too generous. Look, I think <laughs> the, the, the big thing is that, especially when it comes to pivoting or changing or doing something new, it's, it's, it's your mindset and mm -hmm. you believing that you can actually do something new. And I think that was like, there's, there's, pl there's millions and millions of opportunities, but I think with all the COVID stuff and the pressure and the stress, you, there's a temptation to just want to lie down. Yes. To be like, I just blow over because I, or can I just like block my company and just like, I don't just disappear for six months or something. I think um, it's, there's an overwhelming pressure um, to either do nothing or also you watch other people doing everything and you're like, mm -hmm. I can't do that. I don't have the energy for that. And it's, it's, it is, it's very overwhelming. And I think for me, the thing was to have good people around me. And I think, you know, yourself was one of those people that are speaking life and speaking encouragement into me mm -hmm. as a human being, not just like me as a business owner. And mm -hmm. I think that's super important so that you can have the courage back in yourself to be like, oh yeah, actually I can do something. Mm -hmm. um, and it's my whole identity doesn't just revolve around my business or what I was doing previously. And the thing is, well, what you're doing previously, it's not working the way that you're expecting it to. And, you know, I've had four, you know, almost 14 years of business and the whole thing just sort of falls to pieces. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to bring yourself to pull all of those pieces together. But there is something about for myself, sort of, if I start a new thing, I start from zero. Right. And so if you start from zero, then you can only go, it's you can only really go upwards mm -hmm. Whereas if i start with this thing that's just imploded on itself i start from negative a million and i don't mm -hmm. even know where to start to pull out from there so mm -hmm. i think finding something for myself i was like okay i can start from zero with this new project i'll treat it differently i'll just i'll try to keep it separate and say look I can get some small wins. If I can get some small wins, then I can get some bigger wins. And I think Very doing good. that with like a, like with something brand new where I, it doesn't have any sense of like you know, preconception around it, I think that for me is that idea of do something which is within your hands that you've already got that you have some passion about. Take the small wins and then just keep building from there. And I think then your mindset, and I know that my mindset has been changing around pigeonhole and what I can actually do pigeonhole because I have to be able to start something new with Hello Houseplant. That's so cool. You removed the pressure, you believed in yourself and you just gave it a crack. What about, what, what else are you going to do? <laughs> Sit at home and hide under your doona? No. Thank you. I know that somebody will get absolutely amazing resources from this and a sense of hope and a can-do attitude because guess what? You can. You're amazing. I'm amazing. We all are amazing. And once you truly believe our gifts and take them out to the world, then amazing things happen. So thank you so much, Johan. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.